Hey guys, welcome back. Today, as promised, we are looking at three of the most disturbing things about the Flood in Halo's lore. Now, I know at the end of the last video, I said that this was going to be a top five, but right now, I'm drowning in university work. I'm in my final two months of university, so as you can imagine, the level of work is fucking ridiculous, which means that I don't have as much time for YouTube right now. But in two months when I graduate, YouTube is going to become my full-time job. So from there on, we're, we're golden. We're golden. But anyways, let's get down to the video. Here are three of the most disturbing, fucked up pieces of lore surrounding the Flood. I hope you're ready to get creeped the fuck out. Number three, unconventional methods of infection. So, in the number three spot, we have something that the games have never really touched on before. So, according to Halo Combat Evolved, Halo 2 and Halo 3, the only way for somebody to get infected by the Flood is via infection forms. And although, yes, that is the main method of infection, it's by no means the only one. One method that we've discussed a load before are flood spores. Now, flood spores are capable of making the flood infection airborne by clogging up ventilation systems and creating this dense green fog that's full of these spores. Essentially, small airborne versions of infection forms, where all it takes is for a human to inhale the fog and they're infected. Reason being, each spore contains a flood supercell, which is the one cell that's needed to begin the mutation process from a regular organism into a flood infected organism. It's really that disturbingly simple. The fact that all that needs to happen for somebody to become a combat form is simply for this cell to make it into their bloodstream is so disturbing to me. It, it's so, like I said, disturbingly simple because it opens the floodgates <laughs> if you're pardon the pun, for infinite different possibilities of infection that the games and stories haven't even touched on yet. For example, there's one method that is only discussed once in the Mona Lisa, that's biting. Like a common zombie, combat forms are capable of biting hosts to infect them, likely by transferring the supercell through saliva or just the general flood juices. But like I said, this gives us infinite possibilities to theorise about other methods of infection. Like, maybe the reason that biting works is because the supercell is transferred through flood blood, or like I said, bodily fluids. And if that's the case, then surely that means that a human, for example, shooting a combat form and then being splattered with their blood could end up being lethal. If so, then that makes those infections like the one in 28 Days Later, where the crow just drops a tiny little droplet of zombie blood into that dude's eye possible. And it makes the thought of a flood outbreak even more terrifying and disturbing, given how easy it'd be to get infected. Think about it, nothing is safe. The flood themselves are dangerous. Coming into contact with them is dangerous. Killing them is dangerous. And even breathing the air near them is potentially very dangerous. This disturbing reality of a flood outbreak really makes you want to see a sort of realistic depiction of it one day, in a game or something, where marines have to fight back with gas masks, and you can see civilians all around you just spontaneously getting mutated simply because they're breathing. One day, we are going to get that flood horror game that everyone is begging for. One day. Number two, infinite existence. Okay, so what is more disturbing than any trait that the Flood hold? The fact that they are infinite and that these traits will likely never be exterminated from existence. As far as we know, the Flood literally cannot be defeated, at least permanently. Now, yes, you can defeat Flood outbreaks, like the one that happened on Alpha Halo, or the one that ended up coming to Earth during the Human Covenant War, but all this does is delay the inevitable, the return of the Flood. But this might sound quite crazy, so let's look at why. Well, first off, it is very likely that the Flood have spread to and infected other galaxies, and maybe even universes too. So during the Foreigner Flood War, where the Flood essentially wiped out the Foreigners, they got so powerful and controlled so much of the galaxy that it's very, very likely that some of them jumped through a slipspace portal and left the galaxy to go and infect another one. If I remember correctly, I think it was even heavily implied in the Foreigner trilogy 
that the foreigners theorized based on very good evidence that this was likely the case. So no matter how many outbreaks you defeat in the Milky Way galaxy, there's always the chance that the Flood will just show up one day through a portal with fleets of thousands, hundreds upon hundreds of times bigger than the outbreak that you just defeated. But there's something even more disturbing than this. Because the Flood are technically precursors, their knowledge exists as a facet of something called neural physics, which was a precursor concept that essentially states that everything in the galaxy is a living being capable of being adapted and changed by experiences. But what does this highly trippy piece of drug-infused lore mean for the Flood? Well, it ties directly into the Grave Mind. So, when a Grave Mind is destroyed, all of its knowledge and intellect that makes it so intelligent doesn't just disappear into thin air. It continues to exist based on the concept of neural physics, and the next Grave Mind that is formed, no matter how far in the future, instantly gains the knowledge and all of the memories of the past Grave Mind. This means that information and strategies known by the Flood can never be destroyed. They will always exist, woven into literally everything within the universe, from planets to trees to molecules to us, humans. Because of this disturbing, mind-bending fact, the Flood will always exist in some capacity, whether it's their knowledge or their different Flood forms. Either way, this disturbing fact really makes you wonder, are the Flood part of something higher? Are they part of some ulterior plan that we can't perceive as humans? If so, is this plan yet to succeed, or has it even started yet? But my mind is not at rest, for questions linger on. And in the number one spot, we have Flood Cannibalism Cults. So in the number one spot, we have something that is, without a doubt, the most sick, disturbing Flood-related thing that will ever exist in Halo lore. In fact, it's probably the most disturbing and sickening thing in the entirety of the Halo universe. Flood Cannibal Cults. Now, this name sounds like extreme clickbait hyperbole, but... Trust me, I can promise you that it isn't. This is exactly what we are talking about. So to understand this, you have to know how the Flood first spread. Around 100,000 years ago, ancient humanity discovered a bunch of crashed starships, and on board were vials of a fine powder. Now, they ran tests on the powder, and they came back showing nothing harmful or crazy. So, like you do, <laughs> they began feeding them to a dog-like animal that they and the ancient prophets kept as pets, called the Faru. Now, initially, all the powder seemed to do was elicit positive behaviour in the Faru, so the two species kept feeding it to them. But over time, it began to alter their genetic code, and soon, the dog-like creatures began growing furry patches and fleshy lumps, all too consistent with another species we're very familiar with. Other Faru even ended up eating these growths, and ultimately, they had to be either euthanized or sent back into the wild. Unfortunately, the humans and prophets had left this way too late. By this point, they'd been exposed to the infected Faru for way too long, and they began to show similar symptoms of this mystery disease. It turned out that this powder they'd been feeding the Faru wasn't any old random powder. It was the ground-down remains of the corrupted Precursors, the species that created everything in the Halo universe and were exterminated by the Foreigners millions of years prior. As you'd expect, the disease began to act similarly in humans and prophets too. It began twisting them psychologically, initially just causing them to eat the infected Faru, leaving behind rotting carcasses that only acted as a vector for the infection. But over time, the Faru stopped satisfying the infected, so they moved on to cannibalism and human and prophet sacrifices. What they'd do is they'd get uninfected victims and force feed them until they grew to massive sizes and then eat them to satiate themselves. This was the beginning of the end for this generation of the Halo universe, as you'd expect, because all of these inhumane, sickening acts of cannibalism, cultism, and disturbing hedonism led to the rapid spread of the disease across the galaxy, across multiple species, and ultimately acted as the first official Flood outbreak. So let that sink in. The Flood were first spread because humans and prophets gave their dogs a weird powder and then ended up eating them 
going insane and then sacrificing uninfected humans and prophets and force feeding them so they could eat them. If that isn't the most disturbing thing in the entirety of the Flood's lore, or like I said at the start, even the entirety of Halo's lore, then man, I don't know what is. It's so disturbing that it almost doesn't seem fitting for a universe like Halo's, but as my recent videos have covered, the Halo universe is a lot darker and more disturbing than people would imagine. So, they are three of the most disturbing things about the Flood. Let me know which one you think was the most disturbing in the comments. For me, it has to be the Flood Cannibals. I mean, that shit is on another level of fucked up, but at the same time, it adds a nice touch of darkness to the Flood's origin, and it really makes you question how the mainstream population of civilians would react if they knew about the Flood's existence, and if they knew what the Flood were capable of. Anyways, as per usual, I want to give a huge thank you to The Ardent Prayer, Tomahawk, Taylor Hayden, Chris G, Jack Madden, Stefan Kursik, and every single other patron for the hugely generous continued support. Thanks a lot for watching, guys, and I'll catch you in the next one. <laughs>